Our current era has many clashes over borders, which are always about history. Ukraine fending off an invasion that Putin insists is an effort to restore Russia's past borders. The U.S. Congress debates how to ensure and secure safety on the U.S. border with Mexico, that border a product of treaties, land deals, wars, and if you go back, back far enough, colonialism, where European empires conquered other nations using technology and violence to take, pillage, and enslave. The British Empire ruled over areas that account for roughly 50 different countries today. And this is not some distant history. The British did not fully relinquish all colony control of Hong Kong until 1997. And the impact on many former colonies endures, from societies disrupted, families separated, economies hobbled. These are stories that involve dozens of different countries. There's no single way to tell it. But one of the most influential leaders against colonialism was not a politician or a rebel fighter, but a singer. The reggae singer Bob Marley led a global movement against colonialism and British predatory capitalism and for liberation, social justice, the Rastafarian religion, and Pan-Africanism. The most iconic reggae artist of all time, a man whose artistry and songwriting was always on the cusp of much the public's political frustrations. His music has become a rallying cry for millions of blacks throughout the world. For Jamaicans, Marley wasn't merely a great singer and writer, but more a national hero and prophet. He was a spiritual leader and a political spokesman, an advocate of marijuana, of human dignity, of black power. Marley made reggae music a truly global sensation, and he always emphasized that his music was also a means to spread social justice, liberation, and revolution. He said so at the time. I didn't see myself as a revolutionary who don't have no help and not nah, take no bribe from no one to fight it single-handed with music. With music. As a poet and writer, Marley's reference to fighting with music may sound like a metaphor, and he was peaceful, not literally taking up arms. We try for my career to bring peace, knowing that we really can't solve a problem with a war, you know. It doesn't really solve a problem. We don't feel like really killing someone. But whose problem am I going to solve when I kill someone? You know what I mean? So I figure the peace is the best thing. And yet at the same time, he used his platform and power to defend the rights of dispossessed people. Freedom, the right to self-defense, and rebellion against colonialism. There were fighters in Africa who said they viewed his music as motivating their literal fight. And in a pre-internet era where communications were limited, they viewed Marley's music as a powerful and potent publisher of ideas about liberation against decades or centuries of foreign oppression. Now, Marley's impact is back in the news right now with this new film, Bob Marley, One Love. It has opened to box office success, and it's reviving important global conversations about Marley's work and exposing it to a new generation. What Bob Marley protested then clearly resonates in politics and justice today, a critique of oppressive government, racism, and police brutality that has only gained more traction over time. This morning I woke up in a curfew. Oh God, I was a prisoner too. Could not recognize the faces standing over me. On one level, many can relate to critiques of oppressive police. 
On another, Marley went beyond an often domestic focus of so many. He channeled the protests of people in his own native Jamaica and the wider struggles of people in many other places and the more complex resistance to colonial foreign policy. Weaving together ideas about liberation and Marcus Garvey's Back to Africa movement and looking at how European empires were wrong to displace native peoples in their so called exploration of our earth. Is the message of Rastafari that you should go back to Africa? Yes, and that the earth must rule by Africa. Forward. One government. Forward, not back. Forward. What do you see as most of uh, Africa's problems as far as uniting? I mean, I see Africa problem is that outside people keep on fatiguing the people, you know, and make them can't really get them things together. You know, if it's not this superpower, it's that superpower. Do you think of yourself more as an African than a Jamaican? Yeah. Because one of the main things is that we are Rasta. Jamaica shows that the Arawak Indian was living there and it belonged to the Arawak Indian. Now, our history shows that through slave business, black people come out of the West and thing, you know? So we still figure, say, Africa is a route. That's the philosophy that undergirds Marley's many hits like Africa Unite, Revolution, Rebel Music, One Drop, or War, a song where Marley fashioned the lyrics by actually quoting a United Nations speech by Ethiopia's leader that demanded an end to white supremacy. That speech said that until basic human rights are equally guaranteed to all without regard to race, the dream of lasting peace and world citizenship and the rule of international morality would remain but a fleeting illusion. The speech also invoked the ongoing foreign policy liberation struggles at the time, discussing the unhappy regimes holding brothers in Angola, Mozambique, and South Africa in subhuman bondage until they have been toppled and destroyed. Until that day, the African continent will not know peace. We Africans will fight. Marley used his skills to make sure many more people heard that speech. And until the basic human rights are equally guaranteed to all without regard to race, this your war. Cause until that day, the dream of lasting peace, world citizenship, and the rule of international morality will remain in but a fleeting illusion to be pursued but never attained well everywhere is war this your war rumors of war and until that day the african continent will not know peace we africans will fight this was art but not fiction the lyrics from real life about real people, the real liberation efforts across Africa and the Caribbean as Marley spotlighted them with real flags on the survival album cover, including Rhodesia, where African residents were able to end British minority white rule and proclaim independence under a country name you probably know today, Zimbabwe. And those new leaders of that new nation invited Marley to perform his song, Zimbabwe, which had become an anthem of the revolutionaries. We talk about justice. We talk about art, we talk about politics. From the experience of Bob Marley, now with a new spotlight today, we can learn so much about how truth in art can actually not only channel, but shape the world around us. Uh, many know Bob Marley and his many children, including Ziggy Marley, who was involved in the new film I mentioned, and it's our honor to invite Ziggy Marley back on the beat now, son of Bob Marley, producer of the film Bob Marley, One Love. Uh, welcome, sir. Yes, Aaron, that was beautiful, brother. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. I love that. Oh, thank you. I, I wanted to start there so with, with you. How do you remember uh, what your father advocated and stood for that meant so much to people then and now? Yeah, well, we saw it growing up. We saw it growing up. We saw him wanting to unify people um, in Jamaica. We, me and my brother was with him on a trip to Zimbabwe, and we experienced that whole freedom movement. So. We experienced it with him, you know, and he, he allowed us to be there with him for a reason, you know. When you remember or reflect on that trip, 
Uh, did you understand then or grow to understand over time how much people there uh, felt motivated by his music? Because his music ultimately was about justice, was about philosophy. Now, when I was there is when I really realized, um, and, I, and I can't remember it now, that some of the freedom fighters came to the hotel room that he was in. And they were talking to him and showing him everything. And at that point, it, it was something, in my, in my mind as a child, it, was, it became something bigger than just a musician or a music just for entertainment. It meant something more, and I realized that then. Wow, wow, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, you, you and your family are part of this uh, creation of this film. Well, let's show a clip of the new film. Where them running to? They're scared. They've seen enough. <laughs> They're scared of what? Everything here is politicized, Bob. I really, really don't think you should go through with this concert. Chris, listen. There's no way we back down. That's Bob's decision, though, isn't it? Thank you, Dan. Let me go help this woman. Yeah, man. Be right back. All right. You do know I was called into the American ambassador's office. Oh, yeah? Oh, what did I say? Apparently, I've been associating with someone who could destabilize the country. With me? <laughs> Uh, tell us about making the film uh, and trying to capture something so personal to you and, and to so many. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, a positive experience because we went into it knowing that it was not, not just about making a film, but also spreading a message within this film. And that scene was, is actually true because um, Chris, that's, that's Chris Blackwell um, and, and Bob, and Chris Blackwell was calling to the U.S. Embassy in Jamaica and was told that he's, he has been, you know, um, close to someone that they think can destabilize the country at that time. So those are the truth, and, you know, we went into it wanting to tell the truth um, yeah. and, and bring an emotional side of my father also to the people. And when you look at the film now, do you, what do you feel it managed to capture, and what did you have to sort of leave out? Because any film, any story, you, you don't get to include everything. Yeah, we we'll leave out some stuff that we really liked, actually. Um, just because the story that was being, the story that the film wanted to be told, sometimes doesn't fit what we want. So we we kind of have to follow the story, what the, where the, where the film was taking us. Um, and what we feel like for us, this this movie is really about bringing people closer to my father in an emotional way, not not by the accolades, not by those things, but by the human side of him, uh, what he went through during this time period, and how it changed him how it made him into who we know today, you know? That human side, I mean, he was so passionate uh, from what we see at a distance. Um, how, did yeah. that, how did that play out for you and the family and people in his life? I mean, you get the... Again, we don't know what you know, but you, from studying yeah. his music, which I've done, and watching the film and other things, you get the feeling that he was almost continuously present or vibrant. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that um, working on the film made me think about, which I, I never thought about before, was I thought about my father, not as this, like, rock stone, this, this rebel, this, you know, stand up for your right guy, but I started thinking of him as a, as a person and what, what he must have felt, what he must have gone through beyond, beyond the limelight during this period of time. He, he was almost killed. He had to run and leave his country. He, he was diagnosed with cancer. It's like, what? And then by the end of all of this, he came to a conclusion, a realization that he said, my life is not for me. If my life is just for me, I don't want it. My life is for people. So for someone to come to that conclusion, he must have went through some things that changed him. And this is what the movie is about, that period of time that changed him hmm. to become the person. Wow, you put that beautifully. Uh, and he was so young, of course, at the time and died young. Uh, because, as you yeah. say, because of the cancer. Uh, I wanted yeah. to play for you something we pulled because there's been debate and dis reaction, as you would expect, uh, in many places, including Jamaica. Uh, some people saying, yeah. wow, they love this film. Other people questioning, you know, various aspects of it or their memories. Uh, and, you know, we're the news, so we welcome all of that. We're no stranger to debates. Yeah, but, hey, hey, well, Mario, most people, most, don't say some people, some people. Most people love it. <laughs> Some people. <laughs> OK. This is how we do in politics. We say, wait, not 50-50. Right <laughs> All right. Uh, no. So so, <laughs> so you say most people love it. And I will say the box office was a big, big strong open. But what I wanted to play, because we thought about how to bring this up with you, is sort of, let me just play what we found online. So this is different people, many of whom are in Jamaica, and the different sort of yeah. reception. Take a look from TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
This movie showed glimpses of what makes our people so amazing. I was so proud. When you sell out your culture, you know what I'm saying? I know me understand what it means. Kingsley played Bob very well. Down to the accent, the, 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 the movement. Casting, six out of ten. I'm gonna look further and give a real Jamaican rest of bus. Bob Marley is Jamaica, yes, but his legacy global. The movie is a very good reflection of not just the growth of reggae music, but Bob, the dynamics of his family. They wanted something more. Bob used reggae music to unify the people I am. Just a sampling some of your thoughts or on the response you're getting. Res respect, respect everyone. I respect everyone's point of view. And of course, we always want more. You, you can't, my father said, no matter how you treat man, they can never be satisfied. <laughs> and could you be loved? So it's like, we are very happy. We, are, we, we, we were true. We, we told the truth. We were true to ourselves in our art. This is art, it's an expression. And you have to, we have to have the freedom to express art the way we feel it as artists. And so this is what that is. That makes sense, and I love I love you using uh, quote and could you be loved. Uh, what does it say to you? Even you know, even on the critical side, what does it say to you? I wonder that the feelings of people who are even born after your father passed are strong, <laughs> are so strong. I mean, but not and not in you know, I show Jamaica, but everywhere. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, we love it. We love the passion because it's a real love for Bob and the music and the culture and the message. That's where they're coming from. You know, most, most of them coming, even the, the critical ones, are coming from a place of love. Yeah. Not a place of hate. So that is cool. We love that passion and we love that. No, my father is, in, is, in, is in, in the discussion with the younger generation and everybody. So now it gives us more opportunity to spread his message. It, uh, it, work, it all works together for the same cause. Respect. It's going to end up in the same cause. Yeah. Yeah, respect. I love that. Uh, while I have you here, we talk about your father, the film. Uh, you, of yeah. course, are a, a very established artist in your own right. Uh, yeah. You talked to so many people, I don't know if you remember, but I, last time we spoke, I, I reminded you, I saw you play in Seattle uh, back yeah. in the day at Summer Nights at the Pier. And I want to show folks just some of your music and your work if we talk about that for a minute. Let's take a look. All right. Got to be true to myself. I don't, I don't really feel like continuing the interview. I feel like going to dance, but we, we got to finish this. <laughs> uh, tell us about the music you're making, how, how you're feeling, how much you're performing, and what you're up to. No, we're feeling good. I mean, to tell you the truth, the last two years we've been in, on the movie because we were on set from day one to day, till we finish editing and everything. Um, so I've been doing that. But right now, after this is over, um, I'm heading to Australia in a week to do the WOMAD Festival there, and then I'll do some shows in America this summer. And um, yeah, probably a, a tour later on with my brothers too, um, later in the year. So yeah, that, that's what's going on right now. Yeah, I think I read yeah. about that. So you, that's where you, you play with several of your brothers, right? And you guys go play. How's that? I mean, that's gotta be fun as a family thing. Yeah, man, that's cool, man. It's, it's me, Damian, Julian, Kimani, and Steven. And we'll, play, we, we'll, play, we'll play our father set, really. We'll play a good set of Bob Marley. I love it. Uh, the other thing I want to ask you is, you know, we hear from so many people, a lot of our viewers, a lot of people in, in the United States that are very focused on justice and politics now, and that can mean different things to different people. You, I think it's fair to say, and your father, who we spoke about earlier, uh, continue to really, you know, prioritize consciousness, conscious music. Uh, and there's many different ways to yeah. make music. There's no real rules. Uh, but so many more American artists these days, because of either the system or the culture, are, are more capitalist. There's a lot of focus on business that's sort of intertwined to it. I'm curious what you think of all that, or whether you think there's more than one way to do it, or it's better to not be as materialistic. Your, your thoughts? Well, I think there's all types of music out there. There's, there's a, the commercial, the, the, you know, the capitalist thing, the, the, the flashy stuff, and there's the conscious stuff too, but what is happening is access. is what gets the most light. It's, it's, the, and the corporations are now more profit-oriented than music-oriented. And so whatever the trend is and what they need to make a profit, that goes before 
the, the, the quality of what the, the songs are saying mm. and what they mean to, the, to society. And so, but we, we just have to search harder to find that stuff, but it's out there still, you know, so it's there. We just have to search harder. Mm, that makes sense. Uh, that's my, my final question here is, what does reggae mean uh, today for someone watching who may have now been reminded or learned a bit more about your father, learned about you and your family's music? What does reggae mean today? Why, why should people care? Or, or why do you think it continues to have such a global uh, impact, which it does? Yeah, re reggae is love, you know, reggae is love. And is that, that's what we need right now in the world. I mean, we can be a much better society if we love each other more. That's just, that's common sense. We should all know that. The more unified we are, the better we are as a, as a, as a society. So reggae is love, and it's love we really need now, love for one another, you know? Respect. Uh, I, lo I love yeah. that. And, uh, you know, in the news, we don't get to love every part of our job. There's a lot of serious stuff. This is one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. parts. So uh, such an honor to see you again. I hope to meet you in person, Ziggy. Thanks for being here. All right. All right. Thank you so much, brother. I love you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank Ziggy you. Marley. Yeah, man.